On your right is a 42-inch LG C3, on your left is last year's C2 OLED of the same screen size, and I've enabled true motion frame manipulation on both TVs using the same custom settings of the Jada 0 and the Blur 10. Once I got out from the picture menu and let this 50Hz broadcast content play, the LG C2 would exhibit intermittent microstutter artifacts, seemingly triggered by head movements and hand gestures, whereas the C3 would look perfectly smooth during this segment. It's not easy to spot these microstutter artifacts through a compressed YouTube video, so I shot a slow motion video of both OLED televisions, and as I advance frame by frame, Hopefully you can see the frame skipping introduced by the C2's true motion algorithm more clearly, which wasn't present on the C3 in this particular clip. The improved motion interpolation was helped in no small part by the use of an upgraded chipset, codenamed O22N in the service menu, as opposed to the O22 SoC implemented on last year's C2. Other advantages bestowed by the O22N chipset include slightly sharper upscaling of sub-4K content, visible on both test patterns such as this SMPT RP123 test card in 576i, as well as real-world standard definition and high-definition broadcast material. Although occasionally certain scenes containing lots of fine detail could look a touch over-processed despite all edge enhancement controls being disabled. The LG C3 also presented above black gradation in a marginally smoother manner than on the LG C2, but for some strange reason, the newer model actually exhibited a bit more near-black flashing artifacts than its predecessor in a handful of real-life content. On a positive note, the enhanced precision near-black allowed for more accurate calibration of luminance tracking just above black by taking greater advantage of Kalman's 1D LUT and Shadow Detail DTC adjustments. For HDR, peak brightness on our 42C3 review sample measured 680 nits on a 10% window after calibration to D65 white point, and 105 nits full fill. While these figures were slightly lower than those measured on last year's 42-inch LG C2, the 42C3 could actually go brighter at 25% window size, potentially contributing to more impactful HDR presentation in selected high APL scenes. This IP3 color gamut coverage came in at 99% in UV terms, whereas RAC 1020D coverage was 75%, as expected from a WBE OLED panel supplied by LG Display. Just like other LG OLEDs over the past few years, the C3 adapted its tone curve to max CLL metadata to retain more specular highlight detail in HDR content containing 4000 nit elements. Bright uniformity on our 42-inch LG C3 review unit was very good, manifesting no sign of dirty screen effect or bending, and only some pink tinting along the sides owing to the WBE OLED panel. Unfortunately, the uneven color uniformity became stronger at low luminance levels, with the sides of the screen, especially on the left, appearing noticeably cooler than the center on full field slides just above black, which could occasionally be seen in real-world material, such as this dark sequence from June. In game optimizer mode, Input lag measured 13 milliseconds at 60 frames per second, which could be lowered to 9.2 milliseconds by engaging boost mode that essentially performs frame doubling to 120 FPS. With a true 120 FPS video signal, input lag on the LG C3 came in at 4.8 milliseconds, which is as responsive as it gets on a consumer TV. Now, some of you prefer to use Filmmaker mode with ALLM when playing HDR games to take advantage of LG's color boosting algorithm, which isn't available in game mode. There is no way to force ALLM with the Leo Botna 4K lag tester, so we did the next best thing, which is to engage the 444 pass through setting while staying in Filmmaker mode. Under such a scenario, input lag measured 21 milliseconds at 60 FPS and 13 milliseconds at 120 FPS, which is slightly higher than in-game optimizer mode, but you will get to enjoy more saturated colors at higher brightness. Four HDMI 2.1 ports are available, each supporting the full HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second, together with 24 gigabits per second of DSC or display stream compression. Similar to previous C-series OLEDs over the past few years, the LG C3 provided excellent support for HDIG-compliant games, 
tracking the HDR10 SD2084 PQ curve accurately until hard clipping point, which had been set at 800 nits for both maximum tone map luminance and maximum full field tone map luminance. Otherwise, the biggest compliment I can pay to the LG C3 as far as gaming is concerned is that things just work. Supporting various VR formats including Nvidia G-Sync to reduce tearing and frame drops. Although just like every consumer OLED TV we've tested, some VR flicker remain visible in a handful of VR games, particularly during more sedate scenes or on static menus. Enabling the 444 pass-through setting not only allowed for full 444 chroma reproduction, but also improved native 10-bit gradation however slightly. The C3 supported 4K 120Hz Dolby Vision gameplay from the Xbox Series X, even though Dolby Vision game mode remained over-brightened out of the box which could only be rectified through Kalman Autocal calibration. That's why we still recommend playing games in HDR10 on LG OLED TVs most of the time if you can't get your TV calibrated. To sum up, the LG 42 C3 is easily the best TV in the 40 to 43 inch size class you can buy today in terms of picture quality, thanks to OLED's pixel level light control which permits true blacks, vibrant colors and wide viewing angles, not to mention class leading gaming features such as supremely low input lag, well implemented HDIG, and 4K 120Hz Dolby Vision support. Surveying other 42 inch OLED TVs available to buy on the market, the Sony 42A90K which has been carried over from 2022 can't go as bright, and has higher input lag with only two HDMI 2.1 ports. The 42 inch Panasonic MZ980 is a fierce competitor, but at the end of the day is still hampered by its non pentonic MediaTek HDMI 2.1 chipset, leading to coarser gradation softer upscaling and less HDMI 2.1 sockets than the LG C3. LG's color boosting algorithm also helped the C3 present bright HDR colors in a more saturated manner than what's seen on the MZ980, hence coming closer to reproducing the creative intent. Compared to last year's C2, the LG C3 delivered slightly sharper upscaling, punchier HDR presentation, and suffered from less motion artifacts in 50Hz broadcast material with true motion engaged. Of course, no television is perfect, and our 42C3 review unit exhibited some color uniformity issues near black, as well as more chrominance overshoot artifacts than on last year's C2. Nevertheless, there's no other sub 45 inch TV that can outperform it in overall picture quality and gaming prowess and so the LG receives our highly recommended best in class award. If you are undecided about which TV to buy, one place where you can get good advice is at Richard Sounds, a trusted British AV retailer with more than 50 stores in the United Kingdom, as well as a secure e-commerce platform for online purchases. The stores have plenty of the latest TVs on demo, and friendly, knowledgeable staff who will give you unbiased advice for your purchase. So visit your local Richard Sounds store or online at richardsounds.com for your next TV purchase. Thanks again for your support. Ok, while the LG C3 is an excellent OLED TV, some key features on next year's LG C4 have been leaked through online certification websites. To find out whether to buy the LG C3 now at a good price, or to wait for the succeeding C4 next year, please watch our expose video by clicking here.